this is the voice in the wilderness of the people coming to you in the great wind. This is another day that Ayah has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I pray that Ayah has kept you in good health with great strength and has continued to pour his loving kindness and his mercy and peace upon you. My dear brothers and sisters, I am here to speak to you, you the children of Israel Ayah who are calling on the name of Ayah, you who in the time of happiness, in the time of joy you rejoice and praise the name of Ayah, your Redeemer, you who seek him when he may be found and called upon him while he was near. This message is for you, my brothers and sisters, who paid heed, who opened your ears and listened. This message is for you, those who opened your eye and seek Ayah, your Redeemer. My dear brothers and sisters, what is happening today should not be as a surprise to us. What happening today is not for us to cry. What's happening today is not for us to be astonished or surprised. What's happening today, my brothers and sisters, is that Aya is showing us the reward of the wicked and he's showing us at the same time the power of his salvation. My dear brothers and sisters, Aya claimed us as a people. Aya chose us as a holy people unto himself. Aya said to us, He is holy, we are to be holy. Aya gave us a name. Aya gave us his commandments to rule the earth, the laws that we have to use to rule the earth. Ayah gave us his promises, letting us know when we use his laws on this earth what our reward shall be. Our ancestors did not keep the way of Ayah. Our ancestors did not obey Ayah. Our ancestors refused until this day. Our people continue to refuse to call on his name. Our people refuse to be obedient unto his commandments. Our people refuse to hope in his promise. Now, my brothers and sisters, the time has come to reap the harvest. The seeds that have been sown is the seeds that will be ready for reaping. My dear brothers and sisters, Ayah said that he wake up his prophets, his messengers, and he sent them to us early in the morning. From time memorial, our Redeemer has told us that He is the only one for us. In all those that call themselves Mighty One, in all those that call themselves Powerful, in all those that exist, I have told us as a people, he was the only one who rescued us when we cried out. When we called out for help, he was the only one who answered us. 
and he gave us his name. He cleaned us up from our filth. He took us in as his child. He gave us a land to make us a nation. And we all turn away from Aya. My dear brothers and sisters, Israelites, the children of Israel, Aya and Judea. Aya is our only help that we have as a people. As a people, Aya spoke to us as a people. Aya spoke to us, he said in Isaiah chapter 43, he said in Isaiah chapter 43, you are mine. He said he is the only redeemer, he is the beginning, he is the end. He said he will never leave us alone. And he told us there is one thing that we have to do to continue to receive those promises. We must call on his name. We must not use his name for vain purposes. We must not cast his name to ruin. He set his name upon us. When he gave his name to Aiko, he says, you shall prevail. And from then on, he continued throughout the whole book that he gave us. From Genesis to Malachi, he told us we must not take away from it and we should not add to it. He told us exactly what will be the outcome if we add to it or if we take away from it. The Most High told us we need to praise His name. We need to glorify Him. For He is our only Redeemer. He alone is our Savior. Besides Him, there is no other Savior nor Redeemer for us, Israel. Aya, our Redeemer, has pointed out to us who is our enemies. He told us we must be aware of them. We must get out from among them. We must not be partakers of their works. We must not worship what they worship. We must not call the names that they are calling. But we must seek Him with our whole heart, with our whole soul, and with all our strength. My dear brothers and sisters, until this day, we continue to disobey. The majority of our people continues to disobey. And now, what we are seeing is the result of this disobedience. We cannot call on the mighty ones of the nation, their idols. We cannot call on the names of man, of men, and expect Ayer to save us. We cannot call on the names of man, thinking that they are our Redeemer. After Aya himself have told us what he is to us. My dear people, the melanin in your skin was given to you by Aya the Redeemer. He said he made you from the ground 
he put his spirit in you and he told you you must have no other mighty one before him you must not choose any other mighty one you must not make any mighty one unto yourself nor accept the mighty ones of the nations Aya is your redeemer you are to have no strange mighty one among you we are not to accept any strange mighty one once we turn away from Aya our redeemer and call on any name besides his name we are calling on strange mighty ones my dear people i have gave us the book from genesis to malachi remember this he said we must not add to it nor subtract from it then where came this new mighty one that our people are running after where came jesse where did he come from was he a man how can a man save you a man who died how can he save you a man who is in your image who did not make you a man who seek food and water and air just like you how can he save you yeshua was a man my dear brothers and sisters muhammad was a man and a white man in fact how can they save you they was made as you was made where are their power where are they they are dead for that reason i have gave you no image but yourself you are to represent i am your redeemer that's the only image he has made it's you yourself and you are to represent i am you are is told us he say make no image of anything nothing but seek him always sing his praise i have pointed out to you from in the book of genesis who is your enemy i have continued to show you who is your enemy and you take your strength you take your heart you take your soul and you go and pray to your very enemy you take your legs with your heart and you go and pray to your enemy my dear brothers and sisters aren't we going to wake up how we going to be blind all our existence i am your redeemer has pointed out to you who is your enemy do you have that power to turn your enemy into your friend after i am your redeemer the mighty one the holy one of israel have told you who is your enemy he have called them strangers in the earth they are not like you my brothers and sisters they are strangers in the earth they will never never love you don't fall for the fakery that you're seeing seek i am your redeemer stand firm my brother and my sister 
Call on the name of our Redeemer. Rejoice before Him. Sing His praise. Glorify Him for all that He has done and continue to do for us. Walk in His instruction that He has given us. Do not turn to the left, not to the right. Stay firm, my brother and my sister, while the storm is passing through. Stay firm while Aya is visiting the hidden. Stay firm while Aya is searching between cattle and cattle. Stay firm while Aya is doing his choosing. My brothers and sisters, the time has come to praise Aya, your Redeemer, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The time has come for us to do what our ancestors did not do. The time has come for us to listen to the words of the prophets because I have increased knowledge unto us and give us the ability to read and to write and to comprehend. The time has come, my brothers and sisters. Today, we are facing a plague Today we are facing trials and tribulation as it spread throughout the nation. My brother and my sister, I promise you, by the word of Ayah, our Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, as long as you continue to call on his name, do his commandments, keep his Sabbath, sing his praise, none of what's happening will come near you. None of what's happening will come unto you. My dear brothers and sisters, this message is for you. You who in the time of peace have sought after Aya, your Redeemer. This is for you whose eyes is open. This is for you whose ears is open. I pray that Aya will visit you, that he will send his holy helpers unto you and he will guide you by his holy watchers he will protect you and deliver unto you all that he promised as long as you do as he has instructed you to do my dear brothers and sisters I will read a scripture to you today. It will be from here, the book of Jeremiah. It will be chapter 16. I want you to listen or take your book and read. And I want you to see what's happening to us today, how it had happened before. I want you to see what I is saying to those who refuse to listen. I want you to see what I is saying to you, how you should keep yourself away from them. I want, to, I want you to see what I is saying to you, that you are to keep yourselves away from those who would not listen. 
you are to separate yourselves from those who will not hear. You are not to be close to them when a punishment is passing through the land. My dear brothers and sisters, a punishment is upon this land. And if you do not keep yourself as I told you you have to, you might be partakers of what's passing over the land. Remember when we were in the land of Egypt, he told us to put the blood on the post and to remain inside until the spirit of death passes through. Remember, it was then when he took us to make us a nation. He told us when his calamity is on the land, we should remain inside. Please don't be presumptuous. Praise Aya. Your food will come to you. Call on the name of Aya. Food and water will come to you. My brothers and sisters, it will come to you. Aya does not change. What is in the was in the beginning will be in the end. There is nothing new under the heaven. When we were in Egypt, Aya took us out by his great mercies. He showed us all his acts, his salvation. He brought us into a land. And when we disobeyed, as he promised, if we disobey, we will not be able to live there. We, they our ancestors disobeyed, and they had to leave the land. My dear brothers and sisters, we went into Babylon for 70 years. The years he promised they will remain in captivity in Babylon. And he brought them back under the same conditions, same agreements. And they disobeyed again. They broke it again. And there, I had drivers, the tribe of Judea, to the four corners of the earth and said, it will be for 400 years. We had 400 years to turn back to Aya, our Redeemer. We have 400 years to wake up and to do what is right for us as a people. Yet we continue to follow the heathen. The very nature of people whom Aya has taken us from among. The very people that I have warned us about, we continue to align ourselves with them. And our people have gone so astray. Now they are saying that we all are one people. When I, our Redeemer, continue to show us in his book that we are different when I continue to punish us, to prove to us the difference, the more we are put under pressure to turn to our Redeemer, is the more we go astray. My dear brothers and sisters, those of you whose eyes is open, whose ears is open, this words today is for you. I want you to see what I am saying. So I will read the book of Jeremiah. I will begin 
in chapter 16 in verse 1 and it read the word of Ayah came unto Jeremiah saying thou shall not take thee a wife neither shall have sons or daughters in this place when the Most High, Ayah, our Redeemer, came on to Jeremiah, he told Jeremiah, do not take a wife, and I don't want you to make any children in this land at this time, in this place. He didn't want him to have a wife. He didn't want him to make children. He said, for so says Ayah, concerning the sons and concerning the daughters that are born in this place. The reason why he was telling Jeremiah he didn't want him to have a wife, he didn't want him to have children, is because of what I was going to do in this land, in the place. He said, and concerning the mothers that bear them, and concerning the fathers that begot them in this land. He know he didn't want him to have children, because of what will happen to their mothers and their fathers and their children. He says in verse 4, They shall die of grievous death. They shall not be lamented, neither shall they be buried, but they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth. I is telling him the mothers wouldn't be buried, the fathers wouldn't be buried, the children wouldn't be buried. They would be like dung upon the earth. They shall be consumed by the sword and by famine, and their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the field. Here I is telling him, the beasts will eat their bodies, the birds will eat their bodies. For thus says I, enter not into the house of the morning, neither go to lament nor bemoan them. Here I is telling him, do not go into their houses, do not go and lament for them, don't cry for them, don't mourn for them. For I have taken away his peace from these people. He says, he has taken away his peace from them, from the people, these people, says Aya. Who was this people? He took away his peace from these people, says Aya, even loving kindness and mercy. So Aya was telling Jeremiah, I have, he has have removed his peace his loving kindness and his mercy from the children of Israel. In that day when he was speaking to Jeremiah, this was pertaining to our ancestors, my brothers and sisters. So here we see Ayah remove his peace, he removed his loving kindness, and he removed his mercy from our ancestors. He says in 6, Both the great and the small shall die in this land. They shall not be buried. Neither shall men lament for them, nor cut themselves, nor make themselves bald for them. I was slaying him, no. There will be what's coming for them Nobody will be mourning for them. Nobody will be bawling their head for them. No one. Seven. Neither shall men tear themselves for them in mourning to comfort them for the dead. Neither shall men give them the cup of consolation to drink for their father or for their mother. Nobody will be able to go out there and give them drink to console them. There will be no one to console them when death came upon them. Why? 
because they continued to disobey the message I have sent unto them through same Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is telling Jeremiah what he will do to them for they not paying attention to the message that he has given them. In verse 8 he says, Thou shalt not also go into the house of feasting. So you are not to go to their parties. You are not to go to the house when they are dead. You are not to partake in the burial. He says, Do not go into the house of the feasting to sit with them, to eat and to drink. Don't go in what they call the wake today. Or people call it wake. He's saying here, don't go in the house to do this. For thus says I of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, I, or the holy one of Israel, I, behold, I will cause the cease out of this place in your eyes. He tell Jeremiah, this is what he is telling him here, he will see it happen. He's explaining to him what I am telling you right now. You will see it happen. And in your days, in his eyes, while he's alive. The voice of myrrh and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, and it shall come to pass when you shall show these people all these words, and they shall say unto you, What, wherefore, means what, why has Iah pronounced all this great evil against us? Or what is our iniquity? And he tell him, When you speak these words unto them, telling them what will happen to them, and they will ask you, why, why is I pronouncing all this great evil against us? Or what have we done? What is our iniquity? Or what is our sin that we have committed against I? He's saying to him, they will, when they ask you, what have we done? What is our sin that I is going to do this to us? 11, he says, then... You shall say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken Aya. I want you to pay attention to what he says here to them. He said, Then shall you say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken Aya, says our Redeemer, and have walked after G.O.D.'s, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken Aya, and have not kept his laws. My dear brothers and sisters, may I just repeat this in your ears. He said, Then shall you say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken Aya, says our Redeemer, and have walked after our G.O.D.s, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken Ayah, and have not kept Ayah's law. My dear brothers and sisters, Ayah is not any God. God is what man makes. Man makes gods. Our Redeemer has a name. That's what he gave us. He gave us a name. He did not give us an image. Ayah gave us a name. He didn't give us an image or an object or a picture. He gave us a name. And the only way we can communicate with I, our Redeemer, is through his name, by his name. That's why your enemy 
has given us a false mighty one, a G-O-D, a deity, and tell us we must trust in his name. So they have taken Ayah, the name Ayah from you and has given you a false name. And this is exactly what Ayah is explaining to Jeremiah here that he should come to us and let us know. He says, Then shall you say unto them, The reason why these things is going to happen to them is because they have forsaken Ayah and they have walked after G.O.D.s. They are calling, they have given up the name Ayah and now they are calling on other names and they are worshipping other names and they have forsaken Ayah and they have forget his law. Like the pastors are teaching you, you are no longer under the law. So now you are under the blood of a man. And they call it the blood of JC. And that is your grace. My dear brothers and sisters, I want you to pay attention to what I'm reading to you. Because as it was in the beginning, so it shall be in the end. I want you to see the similarities of what happened in the time of Jeremiah and what's happening today. Today there is a plague. It's almost identical to what was happening in Jeremiah's time that I was talking to him about. Today, the coronavirus, they are burying your loved one without you being there to mourn for them. When they are in isolation, you are not to visit them. You cannot sit down with them. You cannot touch them. The only thing that is different to what Ayah is telling Jeremiah to our day is that they are still being buried. They are still being buried today. But in Jeremiah's time, Jeremiah was telling them they will not be buried. But all the others that Ayah is explaining to him is happening today, except they have been buried. He says in 12, you have done, and he says, you have done worse than your fathers. He's telling him, tell them it's because of what their fathers have done. And in 12, he's saying, but you have done worse than your fathers. For behold, you walk every one after your imagination of your evil heart, that they may not hearken unto I am. So in 12, he's saying, you, your father have done wrong. Look what they have done and cause all these things that will happen to them. But you have done worse than your fathers because you have gone after your evil heart, the imagination of your evil heart. Our people have gone after the imagination of their evil heart. Their enemies has planted false doctrine in their heart, the center of intelligence, their intellect. And now they have taken this false doctrine into their, into their heart. Their heart is black. It has a stumbling block to them. It has become a stumbling block to them. They have forget the law of Ayah. They would not read his book. They would not call, seek for his name, to call his name. Therefore, I is telling them they have done worse than their fathers. 13. Therefore, will I cast you out of this land into a land you know not, neither you nor your father, and there shall you serve G.O.D.s day and night, where I will not show you favor. Look what he says, my dear brothers and sisters. Let us read this slowly. Let us look at what he's saying slowly. Because there are a lot of my of our people who are saying that the word G-O-D is just a name for the Most High. 
I am letting you know the word G-O-D is not a name for our Redeemer. The word G-O-D are titles to idols. That's what the word G-O-D is. Titles to idols. It refers to idols. It has nothing to do with our Redeemer. So he says, Therefore, behold, the days... No, 13. Therefore, will I cast you out of this land, the land that he put them in, and give them the laws to rule it? Now, they are a nation. He's going to dismantle that nation, and he's going to ca cause them to be a scattered people. So he says, I will cast you out of this land, into a land that you know not. Who is he speaking to? The children of the fathers. The children of those who came into the land. That's who he's speaking to. Neither you nor your fathers, and they shall you serve GODs day and night. And I will show you no favor. My dear brothers and sisters, exactly what is happening to us in this land that we did not know. That's exactly what's happening to us in this land that I was telling Jeremiah where he will drive them in a land where they, do, they don't know. My dear brothers and sisters, our ancestors who went into the land of Israel, from Egypt, Aya has already told them they had to be destroyed. They was destroyed. He just told us earlier, he says that they will die grievous death. No one will bury them. Their flesh will be on the earth like dung. And the birds of the heavens will eat them and the wild animals will eat them up. But here he was speaking to their children. Just like when he took us out of the land of Egypt, our, the ancestors who he told to go and possess the land, and they, they, they didn't go at the time he told them to go, they had to die in the wilderness, and their children went into the land. It's the same thing. These same children, when they went into the land, they disobeyed, and they had to die. And their children, I drove them to strange lands, lands they did not know. And here he's telling us, he says, when they go into those lands, they will worship G.O.D.'s day and night. Why or if I, our Redeemer, was a G.O.D., why will he say they will worship G.O.D. day and night, but he will show them no favor? Why? Because G.O.D.'s are idols. And that's what they will worship. And that's what our people are doing today in the lands that they was driven into. Until this day, they are still worshiping G.O.D.s. My dear brothers and sisters, and Aya has promised, he will show anyone who is doing this, they will, he will show them no favor. 14. Therefore, behold, the days come. So now, he's telling Jeremiah about time to come. Here he's telling Jeremiah about time to come. Therefore, behold, the days come, says Aya, that it shall no more be said, Aya live that brought up the children of Israel, Aya, out of the land of Egypt. Here Aya is saying, the day is coming. Nobody going to talk about Aya brought us out of the land of Egypt. That will be that will be another time. That will be the days for that will be gone. And in 15, he's telling him what they will be saying. But they will be saying, Aya live that brought up the children of Israel Aya, from the land of the north and from all the lands where he had driven them. And Aya will bring them again into the land that Aya gave unto their fathers. Yeah, Aya is telling you exactly where you will be. 
you wouldn't be saying that Aya take us out of no land of Egypt. You would be saying that Aya has taken you out of the land of the north and out of all the countries, all the islands where we are driven, all the Caribbean islands, North America and all the Caribbean islands, and out of the islands, in, uh, out of the nations in Africa. I am telling you, my dear brothers and sisters. 16. Behold, I will send for my fishers, says Aya, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rock. For my eyes are upon all of the ways. They are not hidden from Aya's face. Aya is saying to you here, he's going to send fishermen for you. What's fishermen, fishers? He's telling you he's going to send his helpers or his holy watchers or his prophets. He's going to send them to find you. He's going to send his name to you. He's going to cause you to know his name. He's going to cause you to turn away from idols. He's going to give you the opportunity to know him, his name. He's going to send someone today, my brother and sister. My voice is in your ears. I'm telling you, his name is Aya. I'm telling you, his name is Aya. He says he's going to send his fishers to find you. He's going to send his hunters to find you. My dear brothers and sisters, he sent me to tell you. Let not your heart be hardened. Oh, my people, listen, listen. I mean, I've been here trying to get my brothers and sisters to comprehend this. Please, brothers and sisters, hear the word of Ayah. Hear the word of Ayah. He says, his eyes are upon you on all your ways. Ayah is watching you. We are Ayah's witnesses. We are his servants. Ayah promised us that we have to change. He gave us his promises, and with his promises, he told us, we have to come back to him. We must come back to him. To overcome what's happening here, it's no demonstration. Go bring us the right way. We have to turn to Aya, our Redeemer. We must keep his commandments. My brothers and sisters, one more time. We must turn to Aya. We must keep his commandments. We must do it. We must do it. For Aya to find us, to search for us, to send his fishermen to us, they are not just taking everyone. They are searching for those who call on his name. They are searching for those who seek him in spirit and in truth. He says his eyes are upon our ways. They are not hidden from his face. Neither is our iniquity hidden from his eyes. So Aya is seeing what we are doing. He is watching us. He is choosing those whom he wants. He sees the good things you do. He sees the wrong things you do. But Aya promise that we have to ask for forgiveness for the wrongs we have done. We have to ask for forgiveness for worshiping the idols, for calling their names, for going in the shrines, for kneeling down in the churches, 
for turning away from the commandments when the false preachers tell us the commandments is done away with. We have to ask for forgiveness for believing in the blood of a man could save us. We have to turn to Aya, our Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Aya, he is our only hope. He is the one, that's why he continued to tell us throughout the book. He and he alone took us out of the land of Egypt. There was no JC took us out of the land of Egypt. No Mohammed took us out of the land of Egypt. It was Aya took us out of the land of Egypt. No Jehovah, no Yahweh. It's Aya who took us out of the land of Egypt. That's him who gave his name, Aya, to Shema Aya, and said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Aya. Aya, he is Aya the Redeemer. And there is no one else for us but Aya. There is no one else. My brother, can you have another father? My sister, can you have another mother? There's only one father to you and one mother. And Aya is saying to you, he is your only redeemer. There is none besides him for you. Listen, listen, don't harden your heart. Listen to what I'm saying to you and read this book. Read it from Genesis to Malachi. He gave us one book. He didn't give us a book called New. He didn't give us a new book. He didn't call no book New. He gave us his words from Genesis to Malachi and he made it clear to us. He said, don't add to it, nor take away from it. Just like he gave us his name in Exodus chapter three. He said, this is my name forever unto all generations. Forever unto all generations. To all the generations in our people. Remember, it was the children of Israel, Aya, he was speaking to. Remember, it was the children of Israel, Aya, Udaya, he was speaking to. He wasn't speaking to the Egyptians. He took us out from among them, my brothers and sisters. They was black, but he took us out from among them. He wasn't speaking to the Greeks. He wasn't speaking to the Russians. He wasn't speaking to the Englishman. He wasn't speaking to the European man. He was speaking to you, Israel, a black nation. And here he was telling you, have no other one before him. He said, when they ask you, when the children grow up and they ask you, why, why Aya is saying this to us? Why Aya is doing this to us? This is what you have to say to them. He told you what you have to say to them. So today, when you see what's happening to our people, tell them why it is happening to them. Don't change it. Don't make it to any other thing. Don't, don't give it no other name. The Most High told us who is our enemies. He told us what they will do to us. He told us the whole world is against us for his name's sake. Because of his name that he put on us, all evil people must hate you. All other beings must dislike you. Why? Because there is a name that was put upon you. Remember Cain? There was a sign put on Cain that no man who see him will kill him. No man who see him will kill him. And if any man kill him, they will be persecuted seven times seven. So too, a sign was put on you, my brothers and sisters. The name of Aya was put on you. So men will hate you, especially the seed of Cain. They will hate you. They will despise you. How much times must Aya say this to us? To all the prophets he's telling us. All the prophets is saying the same thing to us. Open your eyes, my brother and my sister. Open your eyes. Now, 
Let us go to verse 18. And first, I will recompense their iniquity and their sins double. I am saying here, he's not leaving us unpunished. He wouldn't leave us unpunished for what we are doing. So no, when you see some of us are dying, or things are happening to some of us, see the life we live. See who are we mingling with. See who our wives are, our friends. See how we live. Look at the lifestyle. See what Aya is saying to us. He is bringing us in a situation where we must turn to him. Not all of us, but some of us who will seek Aya. We will find him. We will seek him out. When we see what's happening, we will seek him out. While some of us will befriend our enemies more and more. When Aya is showing us what's happening, they will seek the enemy to befriend the enemy more and more. We cannot stop that. Aya said it to us. He told us. Now let us see what I is saying here. He says, I will recompense their iniquity and their sins double because they have defiled his land. They have, filed, they have filled his inheritance with the carcasses of the detestable and abominable things. Hear what I is saying here. He says they have defiled his land and they have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. My brothers and sisters, read your history. See what the European, the Romans did in Jerusalem. See what they did to our people. See why they did it. See what our people was doing. See how they were sacrificing to idols. See how they was going under every green tree, just like they do today. They're in every shrine. When you walk the street, every block have four and five churches. They are filled every Sunday. A day that the Most High told us is the first day of the week, a day when we should start to work. They work on the Sabbath, and then they fill their shrines on the first day of the week. Our people continue to disobey the law of Aya. Aya say, I give you the Sabbath as a sign between you and him. He says, the Sabbath is a sign given to us, a sign between him and us. They have changed that. Aya told us we must keep his commandments. If we forsake his law, we cannot live in the land. They have done exactly that. Aya told us we are not to go to any strange one, any G.O.D. They have done exactly the opposite. They have gone to them. We are not to call on the names of anyone except Aya, our Redeemer, to worship, to glorify, and to sing our praise. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, they have done exactly the opposite. They are calling every name, other name, but the name of Aya. My dear brothers and sisters, let us go to verse 19. Here Jeremiah has listened to Aya speaking to him. And Jeremiah will speak from here. He says, O Aya, my strength and my fortress, my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth, and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Today we are seeing 
the children of the Gentiles, standing up in the front line to demonstrate on behalf of you, Udiah. We are seeing this prophecy fulfilled right before our eyes. We are seeing the children of the Gentiles in the front line, taking the tear gas and the pepper spray on behalf of you, Israel, you, Udiah and Israel. They are saying that what their fathers have taught them is not right. They are saying that they no longer will accept what their fathers have taught them. And they are saying and demonstrating that there is no profit in what they was taught. Let's go to verse 20. Shall a man make a redeemer unto himself, and there are no redeemer? Can a man make his own redeemer? Well, my dear brothers and sisters, the Gentiles have made this. And he has given you it, given it unto you. And you have chosen it. Therefore, you are in trouble. 21. Therefore, behold, I will this, I will this once cause them to know. Will cause them to know my hand and my might. And they shall know that my name is Aya. Here I am saying to you, can a man make a redeemer? They have made gods. That's what he's saying to you. Can he make a redeemer? No. But he have made GODs that they are teaching you is your redeemer, which is a lie. That's what he's saying to you. But here he's telling you he's going to do something for you one time. He's doing it one time, just like I told you before. Aya is going to cause you to know his name. My dear brothers and sisters, Aya had promised us he will cause us to know his name. How we will know his name? He told us, I will send fishers and I will send hunters. That's how he's sending it to us. So here he's saying in 21, Therefore, behold, I will do this once. I will cause you to know. I will cause you, because them is you, Israel and Judiah. You are the people who they have taken the name of the Most High from. You are the people who they have given these false names to pray to. You are the people who they gave the idols to the wood and the stone. You, they have given it to. You, Israel, Aya, and Judiah. So here Aya is saying he's going to cause you to know. But he's doing it for you one time. Why is he doing it one time? Because we are in the time, we are in the end of the days. We are at the time when Aya is saying he's sending out his fishers and his hunters. They can't linger one way with you for weeks and days and months and years. No. They are hunters. A hunter does not stay in one spot. A fisherman does not stay in one spot every time he goes to fish. So here I am saying to you, he's doing it for you one time. You get that bait, you better eat it. You, you see that there, you better catch it. Because he's sending it out to you one time. He said, therefore, behold... I will do this one, I will cause, I will once cause them to know. He will cause you to know. Yes, I will cause you to know his hand. What is his hand? His strength and his might. 
Ayo is going to cause you to know what he can do, as he's doing today. As he's doing it among us today, he's going to cause you, you whose eyes is open, you whose ears is open, he will cause you to know this. And you shall know his name. Here, I am telling you what he's going to cause you to know in this time. And you will know his name. My dear brothers and sisters, I hope you're listening to the words that Aya is saying to you. Aya is speaking to you. Listen. Listen. I will just read a few verses in chapter 17. He says, from verse 1 in 17, The sin of Udiah is written with a pen of iron. My dear brothers and sisters, we who are in the Western world, who came here to the Atlantic slave trade, we are from the house of David. We are from the tribe of Edeiah. And with the point of a diamond, it is graven upon the table of thine heart and upon the horns of thy altar. While their children remember their altars and their groves by the green tree upon the high hill. I am saying to you, He has written your sins down with a pen of iron. He has used a diamond tip to write down your sins. He is watching you, how you go upon the table of your heart, how you trust in idols, how you're going to these swines, how you're going up to their altars. He says, while their children remember their altars, because that's what you're teaching your children. And by the green trees upon the hill, high hills, most of them today are in high cathedrals. They've moved from under the trees now and they've gone in the cathedrals. Oh, Aya Mountain is filled. Aya will give your substance and all your treasures to the spoil and your high places for sin throughout all thy borders. And even you yourself shall discontinue from Ayah's, from your heritage that Ayah gave you. You have discontinued. Ayah say you yourself will discontinue from the heritage that Ayah gave you. You have, you have discontinued, my brothers and sisters. You have gone after that New Testament. You have gone after that new book. You have gone after that new idol, that G-O-D. You have gone after what the heathens give you, the Romans give you. You have turned yourself away from what Ayah himself gave you. And now you are seeking what man has given you. That's what he's telling you. You have discontinued from your heritage. You have left your book from Genesis to Malachi. You have forgotten the name of the Most High. You have to take that word that is all in caps, L-O-R-D. Take that out of your book and put Aya. Put his name back. You have discontinued from the heritage that Aya has given you. And for that, Aya will cause you to serve your enemies in the land that you knows not. Aya will cause you to serve your enemy in a land that you do not know. So you don't know, you, at that time you didn't know who your enemy was. Don't you know until this day, don't you know? You, don't, you still does not know? You still does not know 
in which land you're serving your, in, your uh, people. You don't know in which land they brought you to serve, who brought you in, in which land they brought you to serve them. You still doesn't know who your enemy is. He just told you, he says, because you have discontinued from the heritage that Aya has given you, Aya will cause you to serve your enemy in the land that you knows not. For you have kindled a fire in Aya's anger, and that fire shall burn forever. It's going to burn forever until you change, until you turn back to your heritage, until you turn back to the book that Aya gave you, until you turn back to that book from Genesis to Malachi, until you turn back to the prophets, until you turn back to the word that Aya wants you to know, you will burn, you will cry, you will be in pain, you will mourn, you will be in sorrow, from the sight of your eye. Read Deuteronomy 28. Read Deuteronomy 28. It will happen to you over and over and over until, until you decide, until you, Israel or Udiah, until you decide, until you decide. Thus says Aya, Curse be the man that trust in man. My dear brothers and sisters, JC was a man. They told you he bleed, he bled. They told you he was born. They told you he lived. They told you he was killed on a cross, on a tree. They told you he died. They told you he was buried. They told you he was hungry, he ate fish. He ate fruits. He traveled. My dear brothers and sisters, do you comprehend what a man is? A man is flesh and blood. Once you have flesh and blood, you are a man. You are not I. You are not the creator. You cannot be. You have flesh. You have blood. The angels are not men. They could take the form of men, but they are not men. They do not have flesh. They are spiritual. They could appear as a man, but they are not men. They are not flesh and blood. You are flesh and blood. That's a man. Muhammad was a man who walked and ride camel, had a wife. He was a man and a white man to be in fact. Buddha was a man was a Chinese man, Mongolian or whatever. He was a man. They cannot save you. They couldn't even save themselves. Moshe was a man. He couldn't save us. He only deal with us according to Ayah's will. The prophets of men, they can't save us. That's why they speak to us. We have to do what they say to be saved. We are not to worship them. What's up, Moses? Moses spoke to the Most High face to face. Are we praying to him? No. Joshua, whom he chose, Yeshua, Joshua, whom he chose, and Caleb to bring us into the promised land, and he walked with him and spoke with him. Are we to praise him? No. Are we to worship him? No. Job? No. So why are we worshiping man? My dear brothers and sisters, see what you're doing. Turn to Aya, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, Aya. He just tell you. Thus says Aya, curse be the man that trust in man. Curse be the man who trust in man. You becomes an abomination. A curse is an a curse is an abomination. You are not to trust in man. And make it flesh his arm. The man who trusts in man, who make flesh his arm, he take he, he believe in man and take man to be his strength. 
whose heart depart from ire. For you to do these things, your heart had to be completely departed from ire. And we are not to depart from ire, my brothers and sisters. Ire is our redeemer. For he shall be like a hearth in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. No good will come unto you. No peace will come unto you. Aya will remove his peace and his loving kindness and his mercies from you when you decide to worship idols, when you decide to choose your own redeemer and not Aya who told you he is your redeemer, when you choose to accept what the hidden has given you instead of accepting Aya, your redeemer, who made you in his image and in his likeness, when you choose to believe in what man has given you instead of Ayah's word that he gave you. My dear brothers and sisters, you become abomination. Blessed is the man that trusts in Ayah, whose hope Ayah is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spread out her roots by the river and shall not see when hate come, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. You have to be as a tree that is planted by the river. You have to be a man or woman who has the truth. You have to know the truth. That's what will set you free. That's what will cause you to be strong. That's what will cause none of these things what's happening here happen to you and your children. This is what that will protect you. This is what that will save you. The truth. Knowing Ayer. Ayer word is the truth. When you know his word, you will know his name. He says he will send out hunters and fishers to find you. Give yourself to Aya, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Aya. He says here, 9, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know the heart? Aya says the heart is wicked and desperately wicked who and deceitful who can know it who could know your heart hmm? well let him tell you who could know your heart he says I am your redeemer such the heart here he's telling you he alone knows your heart he alone can read your computer he alone could download your computer he alone could read your black box. He alone could question your spirit. He alone could do this. I alone could do this. No one else could do this. So no one else could save you. No one else could forgive you. No one else could give you a pass. No one else. He said, I search the heart. He tries the reins. He knows your thoughts. He alone could change this. He could help you to overcome your obstacles. He is telling you he is the only one that can do this. You yourself can't even do it. You don't have authority over your intellect. Have you ever seen a madman be sane at the same time? When you're mad, you're mad. You cannot control your intellect. I is telling you, you don't have control over your intellect. He has control over your intellect. That's your heart. That area inside your head where no man could comprehend. But I am. Even to give every man according to his ways, 
I will give every man according to his ways. Aya is telling you he is the one doing this. No, no, JC. Nobody else is Aya doing this for you. Aya is the one who will be doing this. He give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. Aya is going to reward you according to how you live, according to his rules, his laws, how you obey it, how you follow it. As the partridge sit on the eggs and hatch them not, so he that get riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days, and all his end shall be a fool. In the end, he will be a fool. The bird sit on the egg and he think it's he hatching the egg. But he don't know. It's not because he sit on the egg, it's causing the egg to hatch. That's how Ayah has designed it to be. Ayah could change it. Trust in Ayah. Verse 12. Don't be a fool. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. We have to turn to Ayah. We have to look back to his holy mountain and his land. O oh, Ayah, the hope of Israel, Ayah. Here he's telling you, who is the hope of Israel, Ayah? Who is your hope? Who are you supposed to hope in? Who are you supposed to trust? Ayah, because he is our hope. O oh, Ayah, the hope of Israel, Ayah. Without Ayah, we have no hope. What is hope? We have no help. We have no help. And then he says, All, everyone who forsake you shall be ashamed. Everyone who forsake Aya will be ashamed. Listen what he's saying to you. Everyone who forsake Aya shall be ashamed. And they that depart from Aya shall be written in the earth. You're going to die because they have forsaken Aya, the fountain of living waters. My dear people, our people have forsaken Aya, the source of life. And Jeremiah want to say, Heal me, O Aya and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of Aya? Let it come now. As for me, I have not hastened from being a past a righteous man to follow thee, Neither have I desired the woeful days. Thou knowest that came out of my lips was right before thee. Be not a terror unto me. You are my hope in the day of evil. Here Jeremiah is praying. And you can say this prayer for yourself. He said, be my hope. Aya is our hope, my brothers and sisters. And he go on to say in 18, let them be confounded and persecute, let them be confounded, those that persecute me. Let me not be confounded. Let them be dismayed, but let me not be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil. Destroy them with double destruction. Thus says Aya 19, thus says Aya unto me. Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people. Here again, I am telling you, you are not everybody. You are not like all the nations. You are not. You are different. He's sending his prophets to you. Thus says I unto me. Go, unto Jeremiah. Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people. Who people? His people whereby the kings of Judea come in. He's sending him to the children of Judea. 
and by which they go out. He's not sending him to no other people. He's sending him to Israel. He's sending him to no Jews. He's sending him to no Christian. He's sending him to no Muslim. He's sending him to the children of Israel. He said, go out and in all the gates of Jerusalem, that's in Ayah's land, the land Mora Ayah, Ayah's land, in the city of Jerusalem, and say unto them, hear the word of Ayah, you kings of Judea, and all Judea. You see who is telling to hear the word? He says, say unto them, hear you the word of Ayah, you kings of Judea, and, and all Judea and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem that enter by these gates. He's speaking to a special people. He's not speaking to the whole world. That's why your punishment is different to the worst of the world. That's why everyone else, nation, hates you. That's why you are not loved by any nation. Is any nation seeking you? Is any nation seeking to help you? Is any nation asking what's going on with you? Does anyone come out to help you? You're on your own. Because the one you have to call for help, you have denied him. You have turned away from him. You are calling on your enemies, mighty one, to help you. What a fool. Foolish people. My dear brothers and sisters, tell them how foolish they are. Speak it in their face and let them know how foolish they are. How will the enemy help you? Why would the enemy help you? The enemy has given you a false mighty one, a false deity. They have given you idols they know that cannot help you, so you have no help. So as long as you continue to accept what they have given you, they will control you. I uh, keep telling you who you have to call, but you do not want to hear. You don't want to be obedient. You don't want to listen. He says in 21, Thus says I uh, take heed to yourselves and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gate of Jerusalem. He said, take heed to yourselves. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Do not put any load on your head. Don't go in no market. Don't put no things on your head to come to sell on the Sabbath. Don't put no burden on your head, no load. It's the Sabbath day. You are not supposed to come and sell nothing. You are not supposed to do no work. Neither carry forth a burden out of your house on the Sabbath day. Neither do you any work, but keep it holy the Sabbath day, as I have commanded your fathers. As he commanded you, that sign he set between you and him is the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Stay in your house. You are not to go out on the Sabbath day. You are to stay in your house and rest and praise Aya by with you, by yourself, or with your family. That's what Aya is saying to you. That's what he is telling Jeremiah to tell you. In 22 he says, But you obeyed not, neither incline your ear, but made your neck stiff, that you might not hear, nor receive instruction. He's saying, Israel, I don't want instruction. Up to today, my people does not want instruction. You tell them, you give them the name of their Redeemer, and they laugh at you. You give them the name of the Mighty One, and they would not listen. While you trying to teach them some knowledge, wisdom, and comprehension, they calling down on you, blood of the, the deity. Aya says, you don't want to receive instruction. Verse 24. And it shall come to pass, if you diligently hearken unto Aya, he says, it will come to pass, it will happen, if you take on yourself 
and turn to Aya your Redeemer, says Aya, to bring in no burden to the gate of this city on the Sabbath day, but hollow the Sabbath day to do no work therein. Then shall there enter into the gates of this city kings and princes sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots on the horses, they and the prince, the men of Judea and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall remain forever. And they shall come from the cities of Judea and from the places about Jerusalem, from the land of Benjamin, and from the plain, and from the mountains, and from the south, bringing burnt offering and sacrifice and meat offering, incense and bringing sacrifice of praise unto the house of Aya. He says, if you will turn to me, you will have your kings, your princesses, your weddings, happiness. You will have peace. You will have joy. You will have festivals. You will be happy. Keep the Sabbath holy. Keep it holy. Stop doing what you're doing on it. And he says here, Praise unto Aya, our Redeemer. But if you will not hearken unto me to hollow the Sabbath day and not to bear a burden, even entering in at the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the palace of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. My dear brothers and sisters, this fire I have has placed between us is still burning us until this day. We cannot get away from this fire. This that is upon us, that's following us. Remember, he says that it will pursue us forever, wherever we go. We have to turn to Aya and start to keep his commandments. We have to call him by his name, the name he gave us when he gave Shemaiah the name Moses to bring it unto us in the land of Egypt. He gave us a name and we have to call on his name. We have to keep his commandments. The three things he gave us, his name, his commandments and his promises, we must turn to them. If as a people we need salvation, if as a people we need redemption, if as a people we need to experience the power of I, our Redeemer, we need to turn from idol worship. We need to get those names out of our mouth, the names L-O-R-D, G-O-D, those names Yahweh and Jehovah and all of these names, they are names of blasphemy. They told you that in their book, in the book of Revelation, they told you, but you do not read. They explain everything in the book. They told you the book is a lie, but you don't read it. If you read the book and comprehend the book, you will see they are telling you the book is a lie. For the one they give you as JC that everybody is calling on right now because they are going through their trials. He said he didn't come here with bring no peace he bring a sword what do you expect from a sword to be injured you expect pain and suffering you don't expect you don't expect peace and happiness he say he come to turn the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law against the father the child against the father against the mother he say he come to cause your any enemy to be in your own house do, don't you read this book, what they give you? He himself told you, they says in, in Matthew 24, I think 4 to 5, he says, many will come saying that they will come in his name saying that he is the Christ and deceive many. Why is he saying that? Why will he put in the book, they shall come in his name, saying that he is the Christ, but deceive many? Because he is not. My brothers and sisters, he is not. The word Christ means anointed. 
And this man was never anointed in life nor in death. He was never anointed. Psalms 93, I think, or 83, 93. I tell you the one that was anointed, the one he formed from among us and anoint him to be king over us. He promised us he will raise him up unto us in the latter days. Listen to the word of Aya, your Redeemer, and praise Aya. Thank Aya for everything. Thank him for the moon and the stars. Thank him for the sun and the heat. Thank him for the sea and the fishes. Thank him for the land. Thank him for the animals. Thank him for the fruit. Thank him for the trees. Thank him for everything. Thank him for being there for you. Thank him for your life, your health, your strength. Thank him for your sight, your hearing, your speech. Thank him for everything. Thank Ayah for everything. Sing praise to him. Thank him for what he did to our ancestors. Thank him for even showing us his salvation. Thank him for bringing us through our trials that we were able to turn back onto him. Sing praise to Ayah, my dear brothers and sisters. Sing praise to Ayah. Keep strong in the name of Ayah. Keep, keep in his word. Call upon his name. Praise him. Do not turn to the left, not to the right. Serve Aya your Redeemer with your whole heart, your whole soul, and with all your strength. Put your faith, your trust in Aya. He is our Redeemer. Praise Aya. Praise Aya. Praise Aya. Praise Aya. Almighty. Praise Aya.